is a presentation of Channel 11 Sports. I'm Bobby Mercer. Tom Seaver and the Scooter will be along a little bit later. But the Yankees with an impressive win last night. Five home runs in the ball game as the Yankees win 12 to 1. And the Yankees have been talking about pitching and some of that young pitching. Well, we're going to get a chance to see some of that young pitching tonight as the youngster, 23 year old Australian born Mark Hutton, will be on the mound making his major league debut. Kevin Moss was sent down to make uh, roster room for Hutton. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in the uh, later on in the telecast. Ten years ago tomorrow, it was the one of the most famous games ever played here at Yankee Stadium, the Pine Tar game. And Frank Messer and I had to call on WPIX, so we're going to take you back 10 years ago to the Pine Tar game on August the 24th. I have gotten pictures of that game since then, and I didn't realize that Billy Martin was already out on the field by the time I touched home plate. I was on cloud nine after just hitting the home run off Gossage to give us the lead. I heard Billy Martin come out of the Yankee dugout over my right shoulder, and he said, Tim, you got to call him out. He's got too much pine tar. you got to call him out. He's got too much pine tar. I get back to the dugout, and, and uh, people are saying, you know, they think you have cork in your bat, and I'm going, well, I don't have cork in my bat. They can do what they want with the bat. And then all of a sudden, we saw him measuring the bat on home plate. Now they're going to measure it across home plate. Well, I, I've, never, I've never seen this. I never have either. I don't know what I don't know what they're measuring. We went back and measured it on home plate, as most people have seen in the tape, because the plate is 17 inches across. We wanted to make sure that, uh, just inches-wise, and we said that if it was more than five or six inches at home plate, then we would call him out. Now, I'm not kidding you, Bobby, when I say this. I said, if they call me out for having too much pine tar on my bat, I will run out there and kill every one of those umpires. As soon as I said kill every one of those umpires, Tim McClellan, the umpire who's six foot eight, comes over and says, George, you're out. <laughs> and I ran out there, and I just lost it. They might be going to call George Brett out. Well, he is. He's out. Yes, Brett is out. Look at, look at this. Brett is out. And a demon man. He is out. And having to be forcibly restrained from hitting plate on fire, Tim McClellan. I was surprised that he charged out of the dugout as like he did. And I, when I get talks, I say, George was a very smart man. He charged out of the dugout, a man who stands six foot six and weighs 250 pounds, had protective equipment on and had a bat in his hand. Lee McPhail uh, overruled the umpires. We had to come back on the day off. We were upset at that. Uh, only, we were going by what the rules say. And when Mr. McPhail overturned the decision, he said, well, the umpires were technically defensible, which in my eyes means we were right. It wasn't in the spirit of the rules to take a home run away from George. Right. Now, we can't rule on the spirit of the rules. We have to rule on the letter of the law. And uh, if I had turned to Billy Martin and said, Billy, come on, you're right by the rules, but the spirit of the rules, I said, he just hit a home run. Come on. Yeah, I mean, Billy would have gone gangbusters on us. It was uh, a day I'll never forget. And uh, like I said, I see it so much. And right now, I just sit back and laugh every time I see it. But it wasn't funny at the time. Jose Martinez is holding breath. Bobby, I've never seen this in my life. Well, I've seen players uh, called out for years and then got him as a bat, uh, but never, never so an important hit by a whole run and it'd been called out to put the Royals ahead. Man, that was scary, Siva. Hey, Mercer. Didn't you get scared up there when you were doing that? I mean, I've never seen a look on anybody's face like that in my life. And when George Brett said that when I came out of the dugout, I was ready to kill, just take a look at his face and you know exactly what he was talking about. A controversial game, no doubt, 10 years ago tomorrow, August the 24th, that game was played. I'm going to tell you, that turned the whole season around, I think, for the Yankees. See, but you weren't here, were you? I was over in the Huckleberry League, Scooter. Oh, <laughs> We didn't pay a whole lot of attention to those things, you know. Oh, I know. <laughs> oh, look at this. That kid, I mean, where is this? Well, we take a look at the starting pitchers for tonight, Scooter, and Mark Langston having a heck of a year, 9-4, and under an average under three. And for the Yankees, making his Major League debut, Mark Hutton, up from the minor leagues. 
You know, you know it's pretty tough for a youngster to come up and face one of the top pitchers in all of baseball. Well, they say this young man is full of confidence, and yeah, it's really not going to affect him. Uh, he's big enough. I'll tell you that. We'll see what happens. There's his record down in Columbus. Now, fastball a little high to Polonia, ball one. Louis having an off year, hitting 265, one home and 17 runs about it. Two balls, no strikes. And it's very important he gets his first man. He gets at least one strike on him. You know the butterflies are in there churning around. There's a strike. Two more. And this is a crowd there behind him. Do you remember the first game you pitched, Saber, right? In the big leagues. Light years ago. <laughs> no, but I mean, you remember it. Absolutely. Three balls and one strike. You're the only one can tell us what a pitch feels like I get the like Pittsburgh Pirates, and I pitch about six innings, and we end up winning the ball game. Oh, oh, oh. All right, let's hope Mark does the same thing. Ball four. Well, that's the key, is get the fastball over. And you don't want to let Louis Polonia on the bases, so. Uh, rookie is going to have butterflies, no question about it. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for the California Angels, brought to you by Citibank. Polonia leading off. Chad Curtis, Damian Easley, Tim Salmon, Chili Davis, Troy Lavulo, and 7-8-9 is J.T. Snow, Gary D. Sarcina, and Ron Tingley. And he will do the catching. And you got to watch Polonia on first. Stolen bases. He has 29 of them this year. See what kind of move. Uh, a little slow on the move, but at least... Polonia knows he's looking at him. Well, we don't know how many he has. If he has a good move, you would doubt that the young kid coming from the minor leagues, you would doubt that he would have more than one move to That's first. True, but right? you never know. And a, a, a good base runner in this situation would take a one-way lead so he gets to see the very best move that the pitcher has. Right? As big as he is. Well, it's not too bad. From Australia, this young man. And they say he is as tough as nails, so trying to get off to a good start. Facing Chad Curtis. He's going. And I'll tell you, just did get in there. He had an excellent jump and a great throw. Great throw by Stanley. It looked like Spike Owen came up in front of the bag to take it in front of the bag. A uh, good jump by Polonia. You know he's going to run. It's just a matter of on what pitch. Yes, he did come way up in front of the bag. I don't know why these young ball players and old ball players are getting in that habit. Look at this throw. It would have been right on the money, and it would have been a lot closer than it. Well, you got to go out and get the ball and lean back. Well, Pat Kelly is right there. He was right at the bag. Yep. And Owen cut in front of the bag and cut the ball off. The ball would have been right on the money. Right two, good fastball high inside. They're going to have trouble hitting that kind of pitch. As you know, Steve, when you threw it there, it's very difficult to get around on a good fastball up and in. You might foul it, but that's about all you're going to do. If they do get to him, they go, they go a long way, Scooter. He's got an idea to steal third, Steve. They better keep an eye on him. They better keep an eye on him. Now the boy, he was going to go. That's it. Well, Pat Kelly saw it. Yep. Can't give him that one little walking start out there. He's going to get off as far as he can. And if they don't pay a little more attention to him, he's going to try it. All right. All right, even if they don't work, too, it puts into the runner's mind, Polonia, that, yes, we're going to keep an eye on you. You're going to keep you short. And if it shortens you one step, the base runner, I mean, obviously, back toward first. That's a step more yeah. that the catcher has to play with at third. Right. And a fly ball to center field. Polonia is tagging up. Bernie Williams under it makes the catch, and he's not going to go. The ball is cut off by Spike Owen, and that's a big out right there. But again, they're going to have to keep a sharp eye on Polonia out there. Well, Bernie Williams caught it on the wrong side of his body, but he is an excellent throwing arm. He is right on the money, got behind the ball. Let the ball get on his left side. Ideally, you'd like to catch it over by your right shoulder. 
But I mean, he fired a strike yes, to third. Did. All right, now you see Poloni. He's trying to be nonchalant. He's got a too big a lead right now. They're going to have to. Uh oh, he's got that walking lead. He's going. They got a shot. Nope. I tell you, he had, I mean, that was so obvious. Well, from up here, probably more so than down there. But you could tell he was going to go. He gets that little over anxious. And... So, his second stolen base. Well, Polonia, second stolen base in the inning. He stole second, now third, and 31 stolen oh, bases man. on the season. Oh, he can't run. He can run. He just got a great jump. Slow delivery to home. That's it. That, by that, that was the whole thing. Another great throw by Stanley and the quick tag. Outside to Damon Easley. Damian Easley. He 13 batted two homers and 21 RBI. The Yankee infield is in. I like to see that. I always love that. I hate to see them give up a run on just a routine, what could be a routine ground ball. Well, if it's a different pitcher for the... Angels, they may not be doing this, but you got Mark Langston, so you just can't right. give up any runs. Swing and a miss, foul tipped, and actually right in the catcher's glove. One ball and two strikes. There's Mark Langston. Looks like a youngster out there. That's Langston. All right, big man here. Everybody love to see the strikeout. He's breaking pitch, see, isn't it? Yep, slider. Yep. Breaks right at the hitting zone. He has a slow delivery to home plate, so at the major league level, you see guys with speed will run on him. Well, that was a good pitch. All right, two and two. He hit his bat. That was a good pitch. It was bearing right in on him. You like those inside fastballs mm -hmm. from young pitchers, yeah. Hutton's only 23 years old. And a big kid, six foot six, 240 pounds, born in South Adelaide, South Australia. Mm. First Australian to start a Major League Baseball game as a pitcher. Ooh. Three balls, two strikes. Hook show, Aldo, looking on. Buck said sometime in his career he'd have to face a man like this and have a tough game, so it's good to get it right away to throw a shot right out of the bed. And he popped it up. Is it deep enough? Yeah, it looks like it is. O'Neill's got a good arm. Oh, it just went off the wrong way. The ball was sailing. And he touched third base. Well, he said no. For a moment it looked like he was going to get out of the inning. And O'Neill again got the ball in a good position. Watch this. He was moving towards center field, Scooter. Yeah. And when he turned to throw, you can see the ball tail away toward the first baseline. Yeah. And actually, Bernie Williams probably had a better shot at it because he would have been coming in a more direct line toward home plate. Both of them have excellent arms. O'Neill and Williams, both right. of them throw extremely well. All right, two men are out, and that pitch is high tight ball one. So they've scored without the benefit of a base hit here in the first inning. A walk, two stolen bases, and a sacrifice fly. Tim Salmon. Yes, yeah, speed. Uh, speed will mess you up all the time. Strike one and one. Tim batting 274, 20 home runs, and 64 runs batted. Ooh, I thought that yeah. was a misprint for a minute there when I looked. You're not kidding, rookie of EA Kennedy. And a high fly ball in right field. Jim Lairich makes the catch, but they pick up a run in the middle of the first. It's the Angels one and the Yankees coming to back. As we get a shot of Memorial Park. Who is that, Scooter? That's Lawrence it's Yogi. Peter, Yogi Berra. No. And Francis Rizzuto. <laughs> How do hey. you do? Hey, tomorrow is Old Timers Day. Old Timers Day tomorrow here at the stadium. That's right. Always honor. One of the most enjoyable days of the season. Yep. There's Mike Stanley on the bench. He was chatting with the manager, Buck Showalter. It looked like he made a good throw when Polonia was stealing second. And as a chat with Spike on, it looked like Spike got cut in between a rock and a hard spot. 
and cut that ball off. Looked like a good throw to me. It was an absolutely beautiful throw. So was the one at third, but Hutton takes that little bit extra time, just as you mentioned. He's a little slow with his delivery to the plate. And we got to keep that Peroni from getting that leaning start. Take a look at it again. Boy, that throw would have beaten him there if he just And they're both the, of them are right there. Yeah. Kelly was right on the bag. And a little miscommunication. A good point about that is that Mike gets Mike Stanley goes right down and is able to talk to his teammates about yep. a possible mistake. A high pop-up to the left side. And easily makes the catch one man up. It's unusual for Boggs to pop up. These are the guys who have not hit too well against Langston. And Boggs, Mattingly, and Stanley. Uh huh. Boggs, the highs at 258. Although Mattingly does have three home runs against him. All right, here's Jimmy Leritz. Takes a strike. So uh, Langston is a tough cookie. He's, already, he's one of the best. Just missed that outside corner. There is a 321, nine homers, 33 runs batted in. Like Larry says, he's opened the eyes of a lot of uh, Yankee brass. There's a breaking ball over one ball, two strikes. <laughs> I'd say to just about the high foul back out of play. Kevin Moss is like the forgotten man. Really a shame, too. Kid looks like he's got a world of potential. They're talking about a career that just really turned around. He needs time, uh, playing time, Scooter, and he just yeah. wasn't going to get it here. A good pitch by Langston. Langridge is gone. Of course, Moss sent down to the minor leagues with Mark Hutton coming. Now make room for in the on the roster. Moss, of course, sent to the minor league, so Hutton added to the roster to start tonight's game. <laughs> Big crowd appreciating Don Mattingly. Yeah, career homer number 200 last night here. Yeah. Boy, the Yankees did some serious oh, man. whooping on the opponents, didn't they? Yeah, hit his 200th home run of his career. Tenth Yankee to hit 200. And we told he's got three of them off Langston, which is tough. And AT&T salutes Don Mattingly last night, his 200th home run, and the 10th Yankee to hit 200 home runs. High left center. And Polonia calling and then moving over in front of him is Chad Curtis, and that'll do it for the Yankees. One, two, three, and a one. Angels one and the Yankees nothing. The back rack. Take a look at Mark Langston here, delivering a pitch to Jimmy Leyritz. This is one of the best in the business. Look at that. Oh, my. Oh, oh my. That's a great shot. There used to be a lot of sports writers that said there's no such thing as a curveball. It's an optical illusion. You know what? what? They never stood up there That's with a bat in their hands, did they? Yeah, no <laughs> way. All right, Chili Davis <laughs> takes a strike. Boy, I... I couldn't believe it. They had all kinds of scientific things. All you'd have to do is have him stand up there against Camilio Pasquale. Huh? Yeah. He had a pretty good one, didn't he? He had a dandy. Just missed inside one or more. Tilly Davis batting 234. He's got 12 homers, though, and 64 runs batted in. Mark Hutton on the mound. First big league game. And there's the strike. One ball, two strikes. How about Pedro Ramos? Did he have a good curveball? He was for Pasquale. Pasquale was the guy with the yeah, curveball, right? Yeah. yeah. High and away. He's the second pitcher I see that kind of pitches with his. I don't know. It's hard for me to explain, but it looks like it's a little awkward. The hand doesn't follow the glove up. It's out of the glove. Strike three. Oh, man. He did paint the corner on him that time. 
That's his second strike. Oh, check that. First strikeout and a fastball in the outside corner. They say he has an outstanding fastball. And that one ran away from Davis. That was a good one. That's the best pitch he's thrown all yep. day. That's why Chili Davis, he didn't like the call. Plus, it was a pitch he couldn't hit because he hadn't seen a pitch that he hadn't thrown a pitch that hard. Right there, the same spot. Another one, too. Tori Lavolo, the batter. Tori, one time a Yankee, batting 271, three homers, 22 runs batted in. Yeah, that first one he'll remember a long, long time. Got a pretty good hitter, Chili Davis. Oh, he curved him and jammed him. Now Kelly one hands it and throws him out two way. We talked to Mike Stanley before the game about Mark Cutton, what he has to do, what we can expect from him, and what he has to do to be successful. Mark Cutton, uh, excellent fastball uh, with a slider, and he's starting to throw a change up. And I talked to him uh, when he first came in the clubhouse, said he was throwing his slider at any time in the count for strikes and was also having success with his changeup. What's key for him to be successful? Uh, key for him is to get ahead of hitters and uh, being able to get those off-speed pitches over for strikes and not limiting himself to just one pitch. All right, well said. And I tell you, if he can get left-handers out like that, throwing that slider in, he jammed snow that time, too, and it's going to go out of play, though. How do certain pitches get away with that, Siva, where they can throw the slider into a left-hander and get away with it? Get it in off the plate. Off the plate? Get it off the plate inside. You let it slider inside. You don't want to leave it on the plate. You want to make it appear as if it's going to be on the plate and then break it in toward the hands. Well, the best place to throw it is right at the belt. And you know a lot. Get it as close to the hitter's hands as you possibly can. Only one left-hander that gave the Yankees trouble with that same kind of pitch, Mel Parnell. All right, nothing in two, the count two out. Angels lead, one nothing. Whoa. One ball, two strikes. He saw Joe and Mel look over at the dugout. Yeah, yeah that ball's outside. <laughs> Obviously, Chili Davis is over there barking at him. Yeah, they just out. Why isn't that a strike? It was a strike to me. There's that pitch inside, two and two. You know, Chili Davis was complaining when the Yankees played them out in California. He doesn't like to be, have that strike called on that pitch on the outside corner. He's looking for a ball he can pull. And bounce foul. Nice. Oh, I thought he had it. Hey, look at the fastball that struck Chili Davis out. Got him caught lucky. It's really the best pitch that Hutton has thrown the entire game. Mm. I mean, that's right on the corner. And the velocity was there. The best velocity he's had. It did, it did. It, it cut the corner and then zipped inside away from him a little bit. Looked like it might have been off the plate, but it wasn't. Almost had it by him. Two balls, two strikes, two out. I think he's one game behind Toronto. Time for second now with the Boston Red Sox. Well, where did they come from, the Red Sox? They look like they were seven running. in a row from Boston, he said. Nice play by Kelly. Holy cow. Now, that was a perfectly timed lead for. That would have been a base hit. Three up, three down. End of an inning and a half. Angels one and the Yankees nothing. How do you improve on 92's best baseball cards? You give them the same UV treatment, then add even more gold foil stamping. You dramatically improve the backs and set new standards for limited edition subsets with more intense action, higher impact design, electrifying graphics, and foil stamping on both sides. 93 Clear Ultra. Proof you still can't buy a better baseball card. All right, ready to go, and Danny Chanabel steps in to lead it off and takes a breaking pitch over for a strike. Danny's been red hot, hitting 258, 18 homers and 53 runs batted in. Had two home runs in last night's ball game. Swing and a miss, 0-2. 
And he has had pretty good luck against Langston. Look at that. Yeah, we showed you the numbers before. The hitters that have not done well, Stanley and Boggs and Mattingly, and look how hard of a loan and Kelly have done. Mm. A little lower away. One ball, two strikes. Tried to do a backdoor slider there, Scooter. Yep. If he got that up a little bit, it might have fooled Tottable. He got away with a high changeup the pitch before that. Uh huh. Two balls, two strikes. There's that high fastball. This is Langston's 21st start. Wow. Yep. And he, we've look. talked about his numbers: nine and four, 2.7 earned run average in his previous 20 starts. That's the third and a long throw in time to get Chadaville. In his previous 20 starts, he has given up three runs or less 16 times. So he is having a good year. One man out, and Mike Stanley will be the bat. I want to say a quick hello to a young man, Jeffrey DiMaggio. Speaking of DiMaggio, he'll be here at the ball game tomorrow for the old Tammy's day along with Mickey Mandel and Whitey Ford and Jim Turner and myself as honored guests whatever that means old timers is what it really means old old timers strike one you gonna be in uniform no why because, uh, because they said why? I'm too old who said Cor Fugazi said Cora? no no not Cora not Cora Cora thinks I'm still spry drive to deep left holy cow Stanley. Number 16 for Stanley, RBI number 54. I mean, unbelievable. Oh, God, the Yankees are playing long ball lately. They now have 117 Ooh. home runs. Fastball didn't get it in far enough. But that's and Stanley a, got the bat head right to it. That's, that was quick, wasn't it? That, oh. that swing off. Oh. He is a good fastball hitter. Mm. Bernie Williams bluffs a bunt and takes the ball. Let's get a look at how quick he swings that. Look, oh, boy. Man, that is, that's great bat speed. Mm. Great bat speed. He knew that as soon as he hit it. I mean, I must have felt beautiful. And you know, the Chino. Yankees lead the American League at home run scooter. They've gone by Detroit. Uh-huh. Amazing. Watch this in regular speed. How quick. Oof. Look it in the eye. Collapses his arms just a little bit, so yeah. he gets a good head of the good part of the bat on the ball. Two and zero on Bernie, and a bounce to third. And fair ball, Lavolo finds him out, gets him by a step. Two men out. You know, you talk about offense, and you compare. The Yankees and compare the Angels. There's Buck Rogers, the manager. And team ranking and batting average in American wow. League, number one. Home runs, number one. And slugging first. And the Angels are 13th, 11th, and 13th. So Boy, the Angels, I... they started very hot and have cooled off. So all three assists by Lavolo. But the Yankees pick up a run on a home run by Stanley, and at the end of two, it's tied. Angels one and the Yankees one. It was something that uh, uh, that happened uh, was crazy at the time, and that uh, in the back of our minds, we all felt would be overturned anyway. <laughs> Sweet Lou. At the time, he wasn't that calm when they announced that they changed it to a home run. Strike one to Gary DiSassino. It's Gary DiSassino with an A. Ground ball is short, and Spike throws him out one away. This ball club of a group of young players, Scooter. Yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah, they started off 
playing very well. You know, J.T. Snow was oh, was he hot? Extremely yeah. hot. And everybody said, well, how in the world could you not trade him and give him away? You should have traded Mattingly. You know, and you just let the dust settle, let the chips fall where they may. Now, they've got a group of young players, and if they continue to progress, they're going to have a fine ball club in a couple of years. They've got a group of young players. They have good work habits, and they really want to learn. As Tim Salmon's got a chance to be mm, one, really, if not yeah. the best players in the game, if he continues to develop, you never know. Maybe he doesn't get hurt. Two and nothing to count on Tingley, and that's high three and nothing. And Rip Rowan, who is with the Albany Club, been with him a long, long time, said the same thing when I said, "How could they trade Snow?" Strike one, three and one. He says, wait till the first month goes by. The old Ripper, he's been up there a long, long time. Swing and a miss, three and two. Oh, he's got a good, a good high hard one. Well, he's deceptive, too. His slow delivery, and he looks as if he's sluggish, but he lets the ball go. Well, that was a pitch. good pitch. He has pitch, real good acceleration yeah. right release. You watch him, all of his energy comes right at the end. And that 3 2 pitch got a good location. Take a look at it again and watch the delivery. See, everything's deliberate. And for a big man, he's got to be somewhat deliberate. And then right at the yeah. end. Got it in on him. And he still got around and hit it out to left field for a base hit. First hit off the kid. almost everywhere you look scooter when you look at the divisional play the Atlanta is 10 games behind San Francisco and every place else it seems to be a race and of course in the American League East Toronto last night and who else but there Mr. Reliable John Olroot and he had a home run to win that ball game last night for mm -hmm. the Toronto Blue Jays He's having a Hall of Fame year. He sure is isn't he? They're ahead of Boston and the Yankees by just a game. Yep. Boston winners last night and the Yankees in Baltimore Baltimore is a game and a half back Detroit three and a half Cleveland has dropped to eight and a half back all right Poloni the batter Louie Walk stole two bases and scored the game's only run for the Angels and try to hit a boy he had a good idea with Boggs playing way in it's kind of new scooter the last six years that been a pennant race around here no right? not at all in August you know that uh -huh. I know it very well. You know it very well. And it's kind of new. New for the fans and new for the players on this ball club. New and exciting. You're right. Even Mattingly now all of a sudden. Look at how close Boggs is. I mean, Polonia, that's dangerous. I mean, he can play in. But it uh, doesn't have to be quite that far. Look at that. He tried it again. Look at Polonia knew it. What a great catch by somebody. Big Mark Hutton. Just outside, two and two. Last night in Boston, Ricky Henderson, a couple of home runs. The A's lost nine to seven to the Red Sox, but a home run off of Danny Darwin, and Darwin, he's from the old school. He doesn't like it. No, nope. He doesn't like the hot dog. He doesn't good. like the mustard, and, you know, you hit the home run, go to first base, run around the bases. That's what you're supposed that's to do. That's what you're supposed to, but yeah. that, Ricky did that here, if you remember. Yeah, Darwin's been around. He's oh, from the yeah. old school. And he'll get him. I mean, that's an old time. I'll get him. That's yeah. what the word is, and a pitcher will get a player for that. In a sense, and somewhere along the line, he'll knock him down or hit him. Yeah. And that's the way it was in the old days. Oh, you just didn't you, do that kind of stuff. You didn't have to tell him or anything. They would just do it. You know, the late, great Don Drysdale, if you'd yeah. done that to him. Oh. Woo! A bouncer could be true. Good play. They got a good heads up play by Kelly. Oh, they would have never doubled up if he'd thrown the second and back to first. I'll tell you, that's quick thinking. At the end of two and a half, the Angels won and the Yankees won. It's a marriage that has lasted 43 years, from the birth of a dynasty beyond compare to the thrill of discovery.
and moments of perfection. It's a union that has witnessed both triumph and tragedy and still grows stronger year after year. This is a marriage made in heaven, cheered on by a choir of angels. WPAX celebrates 43 years of Yankee baseball on Channel 11. Some things are just made to last. This was quite a play, Siva. And that inning. Hey, heads up play. The only way you're going to get Polonia in a double play is he just runs too well, and it's just a fake. And that stopped the base runner and gave Mattingly enough time. There's a congratulations from the Yankee captain. That is a good play from Pat Kelly. And Mattingly does that so well, he moves a little bit to his left, so he's not right in line with the runner going down, so he hits him in the back. The nice thing about that play, no hesitation on Kelly's part. No. He knew exactly what he wanted to do, gave a little fake, stopped the runner, boom to first, and gave Mattingly plenty of time to get the runner. High foul, that'll be out of play. Oh, or will it be out of play? No, nice play by Chingley. Big whip, one away. Well, Toyota now presents this date in Yankee history, and on this date in 1977, Ron Guidry defeated the Brewers 3-1. With the help of Paul Blair's ninth inning three-run home run. This has been Toyota's date in Yankee history. I love what you do for me, Toyota. All right. Ron Guidry. Sure was Merrill down there just having a great old time with Pat Kelly, isn't he? Chatting away, telling a couple jokes. Derwood's all right. He's a lot of fun. There's Kelly, and he fouls it out of play. He is a lot of fun, isn't he? Yes, he is. He really is. You know, before when I mentioned that kid, Jeffrey DiMaggio, you know what his father's name is? Dominic DiMaggio. And I, he looks a little bit like Dominic. When I first met him, I thought that they're not even related. I said, tell everybody you're related to him. It makes a better story, don't you think? Absolutely. Absolutely. When the legend gets bigger than the truth, you print the legend. <laughs> the man who shot Liberty Balance, right? Very good. Oh, I love that movie. That's a great movie. Oh, gee. Oh, look at Andrew Stein. Got the glove with him. He's normal now. He's not a politician anymore. He does a talk show. He looks like Maury Povich a little bit, doesn't he? Oh, that's Maury Povich, you fucker. Why? Oh. It's not, who is it? Strike three, he tried to pull the trigger and couldn't. Hey, Moore, who is that? Come on now, don't. Oh, it's Andrew Stein. He does look like Maury Pope. This is it's Maury Pope. Sir, Sir Lavella. Sir <laughs> Lavella's a great range kidder. I had Lavella. He's, these he, young players, they got, you know, they, you yeah. forget, young players have great range. I, but you know? I, They're I, all I, over this infield. On. There's Tori Lavello. Tor no, that's not. So that's who I thought was Tori Lavello. But that's Damian Eastley, and he made three good assists in that inning. I gave all the credit to Lavello. Well, first of all, you chewed me out, and then you chewed David out, and then you chewed Anthony out. So I got. I mean, I I'm like that. I hate to get blamed for anything, even though I'm wrong. Bob, oh man, oh, oh, oh. is that whoa? Oh. Is that a nasty? <laughs> wow. Oh, usually that right knee buckle. I mean, that's just a nasty pitch. Mm -hmm. Just outside, Langston started to walk towards the dugout. You know, he's got that sharp breaking curveball, a little slider, good change up. Mm -hmm. And he throws fast enough, but you got to protect against the fastballs. We take a look at some of the scores on our Nobody Beats the Wiz scoreboard. You got to protect against the fastball. High hop, but easily got it that time, and he throws him out. So, one, two, three inning at the end of three is the Angels one and the Yankees one. The next trip you take, remember to bring your American Express card. Don't leave home without it. There's a long road to the majors for Mark Hutton, born in South Adelaide, South Australia, Australia. And in prep school, played Australian rules football and cricket. Now, you talk about a tough game, that Australian rules football. But he's big enough to play any kind of game. And here's a man who was clever enough to play any kind of game. And you know what Cora told me? And, and it, it did hurt me a little bit. She says, she's, you're a much better announcer than I. Bobby Mershaw I'm talking about. <laughs> 
I mean, that, uh, that kind of between my big toe and bunion. Oh, wait, no, this oh, is oh, 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 you're in big trouble oh, now. Oh, I am. We, oh, we didn't do it. Cow. But Chad Curtis oh. is leading off here in the top of the fourth inning, Scooter. Uh -oh. The Yankees and the, the Angels all tied up at one apiece. The Angels got on the board back in the top of the first inning with a run. Actually, Luis Polonia stealing a couple of bases and uh, scoring on a sacrifice fly. And Mike Stanley, what a year he is having. Oh, oh. Hit his uh, 16th home run of the year. And it's all tied up 1-1 here in the top of the fourth inning. Two balls, no strikes to Chad Curtis. Damon Easley to follow and then Tim Salmon. Youngster, 23-year-old Mark Hutton delivers up high ball three. If Mark Hutton does have a fault, the fault that he has is that he doesn't have complete control of all of his pitches, and he will pitch behind, as he is doing right now, walking the leadoff batter here in the top of the fourth inning. That's his second walk. His first walk was Polonia, who came around to score. But the young man has been impressive. Talking to Hutton before today's ballgame, Scooter, he said, all I want to do, I said, are you nervous? He said, big time. He said, I want to get out there and start pitching right now. I just want to get it over yeah. with, get the first few pitches over with, and I think I'll settle in. He's doing very well. That's it. You know the butterflies are jumping around in there. Damon Easley will step in. He's the one to hit the sacrifice fly to score Polonia back to the first inning, so Easley his 22nd RBI. And a throw over Chad Curtis, 37 stolen bases on the year. 17 Ooh. times he has been caught, so he's got big time speed along with Polonia. Well, when you talk about speed, you can't mention the Yankees because no. they just don't have any speed. They're not even interested in stealing bases. It's amazing that they're where they are, one game out of first place with no running game. And there goes Curtis, a big Jeff Stanley's throw. Got him! Got him! Got him. Got him. Got him. Whoa, oh, oh, Mike Stanley. You can see why Showalter wanted to make the move and put Stanley behind the home plate to cut down on some of this speed. And a perfect throw by Stanley. Curtis arguing with second base umpire Welke. Oh, this is outstanding. You could see that he had what a lot of throw by and a quick tag by Kelly. He's trying to say he tagged him too late in the back of the leg, but he hook slid and he didn't go straight in. He might have had it. Man, is that Stanley having a year? And the breaking ball in for a call strike. Oh, and two. But watch Stanley. Well, we don't get a chance to see Stanley this time, but we saw him twice before as he tagged that spike shoe before the, the back spike shoe before the front one got in there. The one thing I wanted to point out about Stanley, he didn't hesitate one second behind home no. plate. The one second is what would have cost him to throwing out You're right. Curtis at second. It was like a double up, play, it was like yeah. A double play. Breaking ball fouled off. I think the batter calls or tries to call timeout here, and oh, then when he doesn't yeah. get it, and then all of a sudden the play is happening. Oh, man. Oh, good eagle eye by John Moore and the cameraman. I picked that up. Ed Berman. Safe guy picked it up. That's that chicken. We might mention that as long as the hitter is standing in the batter's box, he has to get permission from the umpire right. to call timeout. High chopper. And oil will have to hurry. And he throws easily out. There's two away here in the fourth. This, like Marissa said, you know, you take this easy, you think it's an easy play, but you forget who's running. I mean, they got a lot of jackrabbits on this club. He starts and then he really gets rid of it in a hurry. You know, by one long stride. Can you imagine if Yankees had some speed like some of these other clubs have? But the hitting they've got and the defense well, the Yankees, and the pitching. They have some speed. Tim Salmon, batting 273 now. Wide out to right field. How did you pronounce his name? It looks like Salmon. Salmon, yeah. You pronounced it Salmon, didn't you? As a matter of fact, that's what I had for lunch today. <laughs> so I figured it's got to be right. <laughs> salmon. Two balls and a strike. Well, the top uh, young rookies around. 
you can see the 20 home runs and 64 RBIs. He's certainly in the hunt as this pitch is fouled off the Ooh, right side of so. for Rookie of the Year, 1993. Absolutely. Another good crowd here tonight at the stadium. Good crowd. Old Timers Day tomorrow afternoon. Yes. Scooter will be in uniform. No, no. You won't be in uniform. No, you will uniform. be out of uniform, but you will be here. I'll be here. Right. Good for you. Mickey Mantle and Whitey Ford and Joe DiMaggio and Jim Turner are all going to be here also. Woohoo! And strike three. High fastball. It's put by the young rookie. At the end of three and a half, the Yankees, Angels, all tied up at one. of fire is the best movie of the summer. Siskel and Ebert give it two big thumbs up. And Joel Siegel raves, movies don't get more exciting than this. Clint Eastwood, In the Line of Fire, rated R, at theaters now. All right, bottom of the fourth inning, all tied up in one apiece here in the Bronx at Yankee Stadium. Jimmy Leyritz leading it off for the Yankees, and Langston delivers down low and outside for a ball. Leyritz 0 for 1. He struck out back in the first inning. Playing left field tonight. Check that right field for the Yankees. Batting 319. Fouls this one off to the right side up into the upper deck. Leyritz has had quite a year for the Yanks. Along with that 319 average, nine home runs and 33 RBIs. And he went through a stretch earlier in the season where they just could not get him out. They could throw anything up there. Their best pitch ever. And he would slap it someplace for a base hit. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons that the Yankees were able to overcome a lot of their injuries early on with the versatility of Leyritz and Randy Velarde and switching Gallegos, Mike on, Pat Kelly around. Another pitch fouled off to the right side. The Yankees now carrying 12 pitchers on their roster. After Kevin Moss was sent down earlier to make room for Mark Hutt, he didn't know that. And the break, he pitched down low, so Kevin Moss, I know that's got to be oh, a tremendous a letdown low. for Kevin Moss oh. and a big shock to him. But if you take a look at it, you can justify it, I think. Yeah. Get some Another breaking oh. ball missing inside. Langston thought he had struck I out. don't blame Langston, I'll tell you on that one. Just take a look at this, and it cuts the plate plenty, and then breaks inside. So the Yankees with their leadoff batter on here in the bottom of the fourth inning, and the hit man, Don Mattingly, stepping to the plate. Mattingly last night hit his 200th career home run, a three-run shot in the seventh inning. Donnie now has hit safely in 15 of 16 games at a 4-12 mark. He is on a forward pace now. Got a, he has got his batting average up to 307. That pitch down low and inside for a ball. Just the last 29 games down, Scooter, from mm -hmm. Adam. Like I tell you, the way he's been getting around on the ball, really, really exciting again. And he's excited. Well, that new stance, he hasn't changed it since he's got that right shoulder under his chin. Yeah, he has found something that works for him. Yeah. Oh, off the end of the bat. This could be trouble. Easily goes to second to force Leyritz there. Oh, I guess Leyritz didn't get a good jump off there slowly as well. He has hit. got a heck of an arm, too. Uh -huh. So one down. That'll bring up Danny Tartable. Never thought he'd go to second on that. He watches right off the end. Very slowly hit. A lot of English on it, too. He really doesn't uh, hit Mark Langston very well. You got something there for us? Quickly? Well, I got a reminder that uh, what's going on at the stadium this weekend. Yeah, it took too long. Wait okay. just a second, okay? <laughs> Danny, <Tar> <laughs> go right ahead. Strike well, one. tomorrow's up a deck here is a baseball day with ceremonies honoring the 78 Yankees. All set to begin at noon, and on Sunday, the Yankees and Angels close out this homestand at 1.30. And it's Yankee two-tone cap day for all fans. Compliments of Gatorade and ShopRite. There's the hat. Julio's got one on, too. Oh, the right center field. Oh. On the warning.
right track is Saman to make the play. That is Danny Tartable's territory. And I thought when it left the bat, it was gone. And I think Tartable thought it was gone. Yeah, too. look at him. Yeah, he can't believe it. By the way, Mercer, our buddy Steve Gregory from uh, downstairs, the umpire's room. He wants to say happy birthday to his wife, Helen Gregory, recovering from a hip operation. So we wish her well. Oh, absolutely. Let's take a look at that play one more time. We made a big call and the ball didn't go anywhere. I know it. That really fooled me. Look at Tarnival. He can't believe it either. So with two down, Mike Stanley will step in. Stanley with his 16th home run of the year. A shot in the left field off of Langston. Find the game up. Where has this guy been all of our oh, lives? Oh, isn't that something? What a steal for the Yankees. What a trade made by the stick Gene Michael. Oh, Another oh, base hit oh, for Stanley. <laughs> Mattingly will move into second. He'll load up there. He's unbelievable. <laughs> <Is that it? laughs> well, when you get in the groove, as you know, Mercy, no matter who's pitching. There's a stick right there. there you look at the spot on yeah, his face. very happy. <laughs> That's my boy, he said. <laughs> Can't blame him. He had two dandies, not not only uh, well, the, Mike Stanley, the last, James. The last famous thing that Stick Michael did before signing and making the deal for Stanley was hitting back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back home runs with Mercer, Munson, and Michael. you got to be kidding. Yep. Bernie Williams stepping in with two outs, breaking ball in there for a 12 strike. Oh, yeah, listen, you're going to get a look at these caps, and they are beautiful. Two-tone cap. The top is white. Peak is blue. There's Julia. Look at Julia. Oh, my goodness. Who's that? Ju Julia. Who is that? That's the, Cub the Cuban Flash. Now <laughs> wow, backing out of play. No balls, two strikes to Bernie Williams. Batting in the sixth slot. That's Bernie's position right now. Bernie, after leading off most of the year, most of the year early on. Let's take a look at what he has done in the sixth spot. In the last nine games, batting six, mm -hmm. batting 294, but most importantly, look at those RBIs. Yeah. They got RBIs, so almost one RBI per game. All right, he's got a good chance here to pick up another one. Two men on, two out, one-one tie here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Step out, Ed. You better step out. I step out. Yeah, man. One thing that a hitter likes to do is time the pitcher. I mean, that's what yeah. it's all about. If he waits too long, you seem to get tight and tense. That's right. You stay in there too long, so you got to step out and start all over again. I think Langston's going to plan a game with him right now. There's no doubt about it. that's what he's yeah. doing. Yeah. Tingling is uh, flashing the signs, and Langston's just playing a little cat and mouse game with Bertie Williams. times when the pitcher goes into his windup, the hitter would step out. Yeah. <laughs> so here I'll right. show you. But Bernie won't do that this time. Breaking ball, did he go? Yeah. And Ooh. umpire Hirschbeck says no. That is some breaking pitch he's got. Very late breaking and shot. <laughs> That's the signal. Look at this. He held up. Langston says, that's the first base umpire. And they do, and he said no, he didn't swing. Low bouncer, shortstop Disarcinia, coming out Williams. So the Yankees do not score in the bottom of the fourth inning. We've played four, one, one time. Well, here's tonight's trivia question brought to you by Nat West. Can you name the active player with the most career home runs versus the Yankees? Very interesting. And it's not Warren Kishner, our cameraman. There he is with the hat backwards. Turn around backwards so we can see what the hat looks like, Warren. Speaking of backwards and down under. Yes. Mark Hutton is from Australia. That's correct. You have Adelaide. been over there, Adelaide, Australia. You had been over there a couple of years ago. Two years ago, I was in uh, Australia. What's the baseball situation over there? Funny story, and I'll get into that in just a second. You should never say funny story, because I might not laugh. Chili Davis. 
Well, it's a funny story because... Odd, you mean, a little unusual. No? Funny, funny odd. <laughs> okay. I'll let you be the judge. Okay, I'll be the judge. Oh, and one to count to Davis. That's down low for a ball. I was in Sydney, and I got in a cab, and I knew that they had uh, six professional baseball teams in Australia. Uh-huh. Two in Sydney, Australia, and then a couple in Melbourne, one in Melbourne, and, you know, just around the different uh, big cities around Australia. Now, you know, cricket is the biggest game yes. in Australia. Right. They don't know too much about professional baseball. So I get in the cab, and I said, now, the cabbie, I said, now, what is the name of the professional team here in Sydney? That's a pie, two and one. Professional baseball team. He says, excuse me, he says, uh, sir, we don't have any professional baseball teams here in Australia. He says, see, we play cricket. And I said, now, I, I don't want to sound like a know-it-all American. Mike has it, and he'll throw out Davis so there's one down. I said, I don't want to, know, I don't want to sound like a know-it-all Ameri American, but you do have two professional baseball teams in Sydney, and they're here. I know that for a fact. He said, no. He said, no way. So I, I didn't want to get in an argument with the guy. Believe it or not, now this is just how funny the story is, the very next night I go out in front of the hotel, they call up a cab, and here's this guy again. Just happened to be his cab, and he's in this cab, and he, he recognizes me. And he said, you know, you're right. He said, I didn't know <laughs> that we had professional baseball in Sydney, Australia. High fly ball, Tori Lovello. And there's two away. I'll be through with this story in just a second, folks. Yeah, no, of course. But anyway, he said, I didn't know we had professional baseball here. He said, I've been driving a cab for 20 years, and I thought I knew everything that went on in the city of Sydney. He says, and you were right. So That's it? That was the, that was the funny story. Here come the judge. I'm judging now. <laughs> well, it was funny at the time. You in see, in you Australia, it was very funny. You see, mate, it was fun. <laughs> no, it was a good story. It was it was it great? <laughs> no, it was not great. <laughs> J.T. Snow, the batter, with two out here in the top of the fifth inning. Two balls, no strikes to Snow. But Hutton says that there's a lot of t-ball, a lot of little league uh, games no. going on, but professional baseball is just now beginning to catch on. Will it stay in? Stanley on the run, and right at the edge, he makes got a great it. play. Oh. Stanley is doing it all as he makes a great play. The end the inning here in the fifth. We played four and a half, and it's still all tied up at one. By the way, here's tonight's Coca-Cola classic quote. My only feeling for the Yankees is that I <laughs> that I hate them. Rick Burleson in 1978, and then Greg Nettles, who will be here tomorrow for the uh, old-timers game. I don't feel sorry for them. I pity them. In 1978, you had to pity the Red Sox. Of course, Burleson hated the Yankees, and Nettles said he pitied, pitied them. Yeah, right. Paul O'Neill leading off here in the bottom of the fifth inning. 1-1 one, one count to O'Neill. O'Neill 0 for 1 tonight. Greg was being a little kind. And Derwood Merrill will walk out towards the mound. He's been... You know, I think that Derwood, now I'm merely guessing, I think Derwood may have warned Mark Langston about cheating a little bit too much on the on the pitcher's mound. Uh, there were some words, pitches that would do now that. Now he's going to have a little bit of a conversation with Buck Showalter. Yeah. Show, I mean, not Showalter, but Buck Rogers. He wants to know what uh, Derwood had to say to his pitcher, Mark Langston. Now, a lot of times those pitchers, you know, they have to continue to, to keep contact with the rubber, yeah. the, the pitcher's rubber. And uh, a lot of times they'll step uh, maybe an step, inch yeah, or two. two or three or four inches and get a little extra. Breaking ball down low, it's two and one. I'm not sure that's what it was, but. Sounded very plausible, very good. Buck's just happy to be here, feeling good. Big swing and a miss, strike two, two and two. About a year ago, that bus accident that almost took the life of 
Buck Rogers. Boy, he that you, it changes your thinking. Yeah. And he's had several operations and mm -hmm. just now getting some of the movement back in his arm and, and elbow and hand. Sharply hit, but right at the first baseman snow, he'll take it himself and there's one down. Let's see if we can't take a look at it, Scooter, on uh, All right. Langston keeping contact with the pitcher's mound. Whoa! Oh. Well, that's lands. And my, the heel might be just sticking it yeah. back. That's not bad. That's not as flagrant as I thought maybe uh -huh. it could have been. But Derwood may be noticing that and just kind of warning Langston that what the rule is all about. Spike on. Takes a call strike. You want to hear any more stories about uh, yeah. Australia? Yeah, not tonight, but oh, some other time on a long plane ride. <laughs> well, Thank you. Well, we're going to California or something. Oh, and two now to Spike Owen. No, but I... it's a... Well, I have some more stories about Australia. Well, we'll take a look at the Nobody Beats the Whiz scoreboard now. Okay. Red hey, Sox. look at those Red Sox. Unbelievable. Seven, Seven straight wins. Yeah. They are playing some good baseball, and they've got some starting pitching staff, too. Uh oh We go to Tiger Town on Monday. You know, that change of time. Oh, Monday night, night, remember, was supposed to be like a 705 start. It right. has been changed for everybody out there uh, wanting to know the game time on Monday is now 730 instead of 705. Lofted into shallow center field going and coming in is Curtis and look at the speed Whoa. as he catches up and makes a fantastic play in the outfield. Curtis absolutely outrun that baseball. Hmm. Hey, we got a happy 50th birthday to Keith, Keith Wyardo's mailman, Ken Keystead. That's a very unusual. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> Very unusual birthday, the mailman, Ken Keistad, but the main name is Keith Wyarder, who is a very important man here. Oh, Kelly lifts one deep into center field. Curtis on the warning track to make the catch. And the Yankees are down one, two, three here in the fifth. We play five and we're all tied at one. Now, here's tonight's trivia question brought to you by Nat West. Remember we said, can you name the active player with the most career home runs versus the Yankees? And the answer is... George Brett. He's got 29 home runs, including the Pine Tar home run, which he showed tonight. This is the anniversary of that Pine Tar home run. Top of the sixth inning. Oh, tomorrow, actually. Okay. The score tied... One apiece, Gary DeSarcina. 0 for 1. By the way, Eric Getz is celebrating his 14th birthday, Mercer. Oh, wonderful. Happy birthday. You got a birthday there? Well, it's kind of like a birthday. Uh, Jimmy and Jeff and Gina and Helene and Brittany. Out around the Hamptons watching our game tonight. Oh, the Hamptons. They, oh, they pardon me. Oh, in their big, oh. big uh, boat oh. out there. Big yacht. Yes, yes, yes. Up high, so once again, uh, Hutton leading off for the walk. So, Desar Senior on with a walk. Third walk given up by wait, wait, wait a minute, Mercer. I think it's about time the fans got hip. <laughs> not not because they misspelled Mercer's name, but they should get more signs for Mercer. <laughs> the poor guy, they forget about him. It's not just Seaver and a scooter. It's Mercer with a U, not with an E. <laughs> they really should get to my... I mean, he, good looking young man. Scooter. What? Ron Tingley. Well, square and butt one foul. I got people working on signs. My wife is up, my daughter back in New York. They've got their own sign making. We bought a sign making company in New York City. We'll have plenty of signs out here. Okay. Look, it is. Mertz yeah, should be one right, right there. there. That's a trap. But, but, but that's a trap. <laughs> nice, art this? nice article in the paper today this, about here. the Hall of Fame, though. Oh, Hutton's Heroes. One of the kids' first game in big leagues. He's got a... 
Sutton has a shot, but he'll go to first to make sure. So the sacrifice as DeSarcinia moves to second. That'll bring up Polonia. That kid got his kid has got his name uh, awfully quick here in the big league, but I think if you honor Hutton with a sign, you should honor Bobby Mercer. I really do. I mean, uh, that is Hutton's hero. <laughs> to have a little uh, chat with Hutton with the runner on at second base. They want to make sure they have the signs right. Each and every time a, an opposing player reaches second base, the pitcher and the catcher with multiple signs so they can't pick them up and relay them back to the hitter. Bologna will step in. He walked, stole a couple of bases, and then scored on a sacrifice fly back in the first inning. He slaps this one foul down the left field line. Then he hit into a double play back in the third. He's trying so hard to hit one by Boggs at third base. Either that or he can't get around on the fastball. Now that's, that's possible too, but he just looks down at Boggs. You can't blame him. He looks so close to him. What he's got to do is he shouldn't swing so hard. Hutton throws the ball, uh, you know, low to mid 90s. Uh huh. The fastball. Fastball, slider, and circle change are his pitches. We've heard a lot about him. Now we're finally getting a shot to take a look at him. And he slaps this one past. Bob's in the left field. They're going to hold the runner, O'Neill, with a good arm in left field. So that could be a break for the Yankees. Runners at first and third. Polonia with good speed at first base. Chad Curtis also with good speed. So it's going to be tough to double this uh, tandem up. You know, he got that ball a little too low. And that's why he was able to hit it on the line. When he gets the ball up, Roney was fouling it up in the air. It's down around the knees. Look at this, down. He's shooting to left field. Showalter will now come out to talk to Hutton. No activity in the Yankee bullpen. You know, Scooter, we were hoping to have Frank Messer to uh, come on the broadcast yeah. with us tonight because he was the guy that called that uh, pine tar uh -huh. incident back in uh, 10 years ago, back in 1983. I was alongside with Frank Messer, but he's he's had a big dinner up in uh, for the old York City for the old-timers. Yeah, and he'll be the master of ceremonies tomorrow at the... Uh, so we get a chance to see our good buddy, Frank Messer. Yep. Wished he could have been here, but we understand that he's hobnobbing with all the <laughs> great players in 1978 and what have you at a big dinner. Right now, Mark Hutton has got himself uh, some work to do. Chad Curtis stepping in. Curtis officially 0 for 1. Oh, look at this. Mattingly, so the run will come on to score. Polonia will go to second and maybe to third. Now he holds. Ooh, I think that's the first we'll time I've seen Mattingly. Uh, what happens here on the scoring. It looked like it went off Mattingly's glove. It's hard to believe, but that's what it looked like, like it happened. Let's see. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He should have had that one. Boy, that is a rare incident mm. at first base. And it could be a very costly one for Mark Cutton and the Yankees. So Polonia will lead off at second base. Still only one out. It's a two-to-one game now in favor of the Angels. That pitch in for a call strike. So they are going to give an error to Mattingly at first base. And rightfully so. That yeah. ball should have been caught. You got to keep an eye on Polonia at second. He stole third back in the first inning. And he's got a lead just about as long as he had last time. There there he goes. goes. And the throw. No throw. So Polonia has stolen third base twice tonight. Holy cow. You could see the lead. I mean, he yeah. was way off there. You got to step off the rubber or just do something. Look at that walking start he got on him. 
no sense throwing there. Yeah, your middle infielders really have to play a, a big part in keeping that runner close to second base. Buck got a black eye. Did you see how Buck's eye? Oh, really? I didn't notice that. But anyway, the infield will come out, come in to try to cut this run off, and Whoa. Curtis loses the bat, and he strikes out. So a big strikeout for Hutt. And there's two away here in the sixth. Oh, boy, he threw the helmet against the wall. I don't like to leave that man at third with less than two out. Looked like Buck had a black eye. More. <laughs> Whoa. That was a good slide. Boy. He swung and then tried to hold up a little. See his left eye? Mm-hmm. Ran into a door. Damon Easley will step in. I don't know. Uh, today, I was in the clubhouse and that manager's door was shut for a long, long yeah. time. Uh, Gene Stick Michael was in there, show Walter, and... Was Kevin Moss in there? Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that pitch foul back and out of place, so it's one and one now to Easley. Sometimes you just can't do justice to a person when you show them on camera. Yeah, that's right. Like, I think you look a lot better in person. Thank you very much. Camera. If I would looked as bad as I do on camera, I'd pack it in. I'm looking at you now, and I know you look a lot better. That pitch inside for a ball, two and one. Your hair, you know, your hair, that little fluffy hair that you have, that beautiful hair that you shampoo, what, two or three times a day? It looks prettier in person. See, it doesn't look good on camera, but no. it looks pretty in person. <laughs> Three balls and a strike now to Eastley. And your shoes, they don't look <laughs> pretty on camera either. <laughs> no, they look they're much pretty better bad. in person, yeah. They're pretty bad, but you know I have to because I can't mention it, but the problem I have with my bunion and my bad toe. play three and two now to Eastley with two outs here in the sixth. <laughs> and the big B on your foot. Yep. It's a shame. Showalter, Tony Conninger on the bench together. People want a strikeout. And he got it. Three and two breaking ball from Mark Hutton had easily way out in front. Two big strikeouts for the young man. But the Angels do score one here in the sixth. They now lead it two to one at the end of five and a half. Back to the stadium, bottom of the sixth inning. Wade Boggs leading it off for the Yankees and fouls the first pitch up into the upper deck down the left field side. And the Angels lead it two to one. You notice Boggs each time up has swung at the first pitch, which is very unusual. Well, I think when you have a tough left-hander out there on yeah. the mound and you get a pitch that you can swing at, you better not be waiting. And being a left-hander, you know about that. That's good think. Oh, strike two, 0 oh and two. And the one bad thing about Mark Langston, if you're a left-handed batter, he's got that sharp breaking slider, that hard slider, and that is just absolutely unhittable if he's on. So if you get a fastball, you better be swinging at it. Line oh, 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 oh. oh, oh, and two. two. Uh, that Han, that was a woo. ball that hung inside for a bog. And you don't make that many mistakes against Wade Boggs. He'll hurt you. So the Yankees put their leadoff batter on here in the sixth. Hey, I got to thank Bob uh, Merson from LNS Graphics for my uh, scorecard that uh, Stu got me. Oh, yeah. But got regular scorecard. First time, half the season's gone, I finally got a scorecard. They look good, too. You're doing a good job. Thank you. That'll bring up Jimmy Layritz. <laughs> Layritz 0 for 1. He struck out the first, and then he walked back in the fourth. And that pitch up high for a ball. Oh, man. He's a 2 for 21. Coming into this uh, game, Layritz three for nine with a double on this homestand. Just missed that one. High fly ball in the left field. Polonia 
will settle under it. And there's one down. Leyritz went for the fences and he got underneath it. He had a good swing. Ooh. Yeah, sure. Boy, that's a little. That's the end of the bat. Yep. That'll bring up Don Mattingly. Mattingly, one of those types of players that likes to go through many different stances. He has found one that is comfortable with him right now, that tucking that shoulder in underneath that chin. That pitch inside for a ball. Well, it's really keeping him back, too. He's not but you, you, the point that I'm getting at is that when I talk to Donnie about hitting, and I ask him about his stance and about, you know, tucking the shoulder in, and he just kind of grins and points up to his head, you know, and says, hey, really, it's right here in my head. That pitch foul back and out of play. It's one money. He says, I got to get my head straight before I get hit, no matter what my stance Yeah, is. right. And he has been a little bit, what he has done is that he says that I just want to forget about what happened yesterday. Yeah, I had a good game yesterday. That's gone. Today, this moment, this time at bat is what I want to concentrate on. Of course, you could do that every time up and not worry about what happened uh, two games ago or three games ago. Get out of the center field, off the end of the bat. Coming on his heart. Oh, what a get there. Boggs goes around second. He'll go to third. He'll hold him battingly into second. The Yankees with runner and second and third and only one out. Oh, I want to tell you, you know, Boggs did a great job of running there. He saw the ball was going to drop in. He would have made third easily, and then the ball was kind of butchered out there, and Mattingly showed me something getting to second base. So, a big play right off the end of the bat, and Curtis couldn't catch up with it. Let's see who messes this up. Oh, off his glove. Yep. See if they give him an error or a double. I would think that they would give the center fielder an error it on that. It should be. But some strategy talk now with Buck Rogers out to visit with Mark Langston. Danny Tartable, the batter. There's Chad Curtis. He thinks he'll be thinking about that strikeout, that big strikeout with leaving a runner on uh -huh. at third base with less than uh, two outs. The good thing about Manning going to second base kind of breaks up the chance for the double play that Tonneville hits into a All right, Scooter, you're the manager here. What are you going to do? You're going to pitch to Carnival? You're going to put him on and pitch to Mike Stanley? No, I wouldn't pitch to him. Stanley's a hot hitter. All right, they're going to pitch to Carnival. But it may be one of those don't give unintentional, anything to unintentional walks to Danny Carnival. Don't give him anything to hit. If he hits the ball, make him hit it on the ground. Do not let him get do not let him get it up in the air. We'll score. Happy 25th birthday to keep Grist from Locust Valley. Ooh. Inside corner for a call strike. One and one. You know, Tonable gets called out a lot on third strikes on that pitch. Because then he looks out over the plate. Oh, he yeah. likes the ball out over the plate and up a little bit. where he's looking yeah, right now so for a right. that he can really drive until he gets at least two strikes on him. Then he's got to try to protect the play if he can. Whoa. Oh, breaking ball in Whoa. for a ball strike. A good one by Mike. Yep. One and two. Well, this has got to, uh, got to put a little grin, I think, on Mike Stanley's face that they respect him enough to go ahead and pitch to Danny Tarbell in this yeah. situation and not walk Danny and pitch to Stanley and set up the double play. All right. Second baseman Lovello will make the play at first, but Fox comes on to score. We have a tie game. Oh, man. Lovello had a shot at Mattingly, who was off the bag, but uh, didn't make that much difference. Except we got a run in scoring position, but. Yeah, that was tough. You got to give uh, Tonable a lot of credit behind on the count. He didn't know whether it would be a curve, a slider, or what. And he got that big run in. Oh, told you we'd get a run. By the way, there's a uh, Channel 9 cameraman, Andy Hernandez, who has the high home camera. And this is his 32nd year on the job. Paisan of uh, Julio Castapoli. And Stanley takes a pitch outside for a ball. Stanley with a home run and, and a single back in the fourth. So he's two for two, an RBI. 
RBI number 54, home run number 16. And the fans getting into this game now with a 2-2 tie. Well, you look at Stanley's numbers, and they, they really are impressive. this game, Mike Stanley was 10 for 20. Now he's 12 for 22 with five home runs and 13 RBIs on this homestand. Mm. Oh, look at him. Yeah, with a 2-0 count, they'll just put him on oh, and oh. Bertie Williams. So an intentional walk to Mike Stanley, and the Yankees will have runners at first and second. Two outs and Bernie Williams coming into play. Oh, I said it. Bernie's about due. Bernie 0 for 2. He has grounded out twice in this game so far. Career high of 10 home runs in 1993. Breaking ball up high, ball one, one and oh. That means you're practicing or step into the ball. Murray has got a good idea of the strike zone. Well, that made him a pretty good leadoff pass. Back in the sixth position, it makes you a pretty good RBI guy because if you can work that pitcher to the 2-0, 3-1 counts all the time, Bernie with good power from the right side and the left side. And Buck Showalter, knowing that, knowing that Bernie still was having a little bit of a problem and maybe taking some pressure off of him, uh, taking him... Oh! Base hit, Williams, batting, it'll come around, and the throw will not be in time, and the Yankees lead it 3-2. to two. Bernie Williams, batting in the sixth so coming through with two outs, a big base hit for Williams, and the Yankees lead it by the score of 3-2. to two. Oh, he had to pull the arms in, too. And Langston got a bit of a glove on the ball. What a clutch base hit. Watch him pull his arm. Oh, man. Man, that's it. Ah, oh, you like to see that. Boy, he knows what that means. <laughs> that's more emotion than I've seen him show all year long. What kidding by the Yankees here in the sixth inning as they take the lead. And Paul O'Neill will step in. Runner still at first and Oh, back. look at that. Oh, oh, oh. Stanley will round third. The throw goes to third, and Williams is in time. The Yankees now lead it four to two as Stanley crosses the plate. Paul O'Neill with a two-out RBI, number 48 on the year. Oh, oh. Woo. it's catching. Catch the fever. Wow. What a job of clutch hitting. Barely by a run going into the bottom of the sixth. They picked up three. They said O'Neill couldn't hit left-handers. He's had a good year. <laughs> yeah, right. Said this club has really got it. Yeah. They want to win. They got a taste of the pennant fee this season. I mean, Mercer. <laughs> Spike Owen will step in. And the pitch up high to Owen. Spike over for two. Robbed of a little base hit. Little fly ball in the center field. Chad Curtis made a good play on him back in the fifth. You know, if those things would keep putting up more Mercer signs, I'd know you from Seaver, and I wouldn't have to make a mistake. Look at what he... Well, it's got to be a happy 83rd birthday for Al Petchy of Freehold, New Jersey. Oh, off the foot of Langston, they're going to make the play at second. Otherwise, the Yankees would have had another base hit, another run. It's uh, Spike Owen. The Yankees with 
Three big runs here. They take the lead at the end of six by the score of four to two. crowd on hand as we move into the seventh inning. The seventh inning game recap is brought to you by Budweiser. California first easy sacrifice fly. Polonia scoring. And Stanley with his home run to tie it up. And here's Tom Seaver to bring you the play by play. Thank you very much Bobby and good job. Four runs there. Excuse me. Three runs in the bottom of the six of the Yankees lead at four to two. You got some clunch hits last inning. Boy. Big, You're, big timely two out hits for the Yankees. You and the scooter. As Tim Salmon leads it off for the Angels here in the top of the seventh, and a sharp single to left. One of the fine young players. And a game of baseball today. 20 home runs and 64 RBIs for that young man. And he is facing a pretty fine young pitcher. Mark Hutton making his major league debut. And you look at his line, six innings, he has given up just three base hits to a relatively young ball club, the California Angels, but facing one of their veterans now in Chili Davis. Switch hitting Davis, 0 for 2, hitting 234, 12 home runs and 64 RBIs. He's granted out and struck out on the pitch on the outside corner just like that. And he didn't like it when he struck out, and he told Durwood Merrill all about it. In the bullpen for the Yankees, Bobby Munoz on the left, and the left-hander is Steve Howe. As Hutton is nearing the 100 pitch mark. Hanging breaking ball, did he go? Nope. Third base umpire Ed Hickok says no, he did not go. Hutton at the Triple A Columbus Ball Club was seven and four with a 3.4 earned run average in his 16 starts at the Triple A level. away ball three. Well, of course, check, he, that, excuse he, me, check that ball two. Hutton becomes the first Australian born player ever to put on the pinstripes. The first Australian was Joe Quinn who played at the turn of the century. The first one to play professional baseball. Two balls and a strike to Chili Davis. Down and away that's ball three. A long inning for the Yankees. Back in the bottom of the sixth inning. Could Hutton have tightened up a bit? Maybe he lost his concentration. Well, with that you... big buildup, you know, you're so, yeah. uh, your adrenaline is really flowing at the start of the game, the anticipation. Mattingly, will they get two? They get the lead runner and sink the second. Davis is out at first. Tim Wilkie at second base, the umpire at second base, are looking to see if the runner, Tim Salmon, slid off the base. Well, once Mattingly tags the bag, it doesn't become a force play. You have to put the tag on the runner. And Spike keeping the tag on Salmon. But he stays on the bag. And the runner will move into scoring position. Like Spike tried to push him up. Yeah, a little bit. That's good camera work. His foot trickery. never left the bag. Good camera work and good positioning by the umpire Wilkie at second base. Mike Lombardo kept that shot. That was good. That foot going across the top of that bag. They'll bring up Troy Lavulo. Lavulo 0 for 2. As Hutton has given up just three base hits to the Angels. Mattingly on one hop. And the runner Salmon holds it third and there are two gone. Well the Yankees have been talking about their young pitching and the likes of Mark Hutton, Domingo John, others down on the farm system and in the farm system. If you're going to make trades, and of course there's been many, many stories about trades, you see Tony Conninger now on the phone, check to see if everybody is warm and ready to come in the game in case they're needed. Munoz on the left, 
Steve Howell on the right. J.T. Snow here in the top of the seventh with two outs. The last two starts that Hutton had at the AAA level. He bit seven, in, seven innings both times out, once against Toledo and once against Richmond. He won both, both games and gave up just three hits in each of those games. He has given up just three hits here tonight. On that outside corner of beauty and quickly no balls and two strikes. Yankees looking for some starting pitching and hoping that they can get it from their young people like Mark Cutton without having to try to make a trade. So let's take a look at Mark Cutton to see what he's got, see if he's really got what it takes to lead us on to a pennant drive. Wow, that was a pretty good pitch right there. And if he doesn't, they'll make a quick evaluation and maybe look at something else. Maybe needs a little bit more seasoning. That ball looks like a strike to me. May have called it for a little bit high. A ball, two strikes. High speed pitch up and away. But the Yankees carrying 12 pitches now. Pitchers on their roster after sending Kevin Moss to Triple A Columbus to make room for Hutton. I wouldn't be surprised if the Yankees are going to pull the trigger on a trade. They don't do it pretty soon. Got him. Yes, sir, he did go, and Hutton works out of it. Leaves a runner stranded at third. He's pitched a three hitter through seven. After six and a half, the Yanks lead it four to two. There's a time to get away from it all. David, you're fired. I can't believe it. See the sights. We have to see the mountains and the prairies and the whole rest of that song. Take life a little easier. 83 miles an hour. 83. And discover yourself. Boy, did we find ourselves in the middle of nowhere. Albert Brooks and Julie Haggerty. We're in hell. We entered hell. Looks <laughs> like a twilight zone. Where are we? I don't know. Lost in America. Tomorrow at 8 on Channel 11, New York's movie station. Well, back to the stadium are those Aussie hats? Could be. Mark cut on the mound, but some upcoming telecasts tomorrow at 2 o'clock, California. Once again, versus the Yankees on MSG. We'll be back on the air at 1.30 on Sunday. And then again on Monday at 7.30 right here on WPIX. Uh, 7.30 game Monday. It had been listed at 7, I believe. Here at the bottom of the seventh inning, no balls and a strike to Pat Kelly. And that's up high. Uh, ball on a strike. Take a look at the end of the last inning. The check swing by the hitter, J.T. Snow. And big Mark Hutton works out of it. Derwood Merrill says, yeah, ring him up. And a big strikeout for Hutton. Now that ball in. Oh, another fine play in the outfield. Tim Salmon takes it away from Pat Kelly, and there's one gone. Well, a young outfield for the California Angels. A rookie right fielder, Tim Salmon, making a fine play. Chad Curtis in center field. The veteran in that outfield really is Polonia. Polonia not that old in his late 20s, early 30s. Brings up Wade Boggs for the fourth time. Boggs one for three. Curtis plays awfully deep in center, isn't he? He does play deep. Awfully deep in center. With his speed, he really doesn't have to play that deep. Popped him up. Well, it's stay in play, easily down from third, and the pitcher, look out, somebody's got to call it, and it's the pitcher's job. He was uncertain there if easy was going to get there. You can see the catcher, Tingley, pointing to easily. But Langston didn't take his eye off of it, and Easley is right there. Langston takes over. That's really the pitcher's job to call who's going to catch it, either the third baseman or the first baseman. Let me ask you something. Why do they always want to call the pitcher off of any play? I they don't can? know. They figure that pitchers can't do anything but throw the ball. Well, I mean. <laughs> I wouldn't say that to Bob Gibson. <laughs> no. Langston is an excellent athlete. I mean, a superb athlete. But it's just like it's part of the game that yep. if the fly ball goes up yep. or whatever you can do, you always call the pitcher off and let the regular It's actually pretty good because somebody's, uh, they, because you've got a quarterback every time. I mean, the, the reason is, really the, the, the logical reason is that the, 
The pitcher becomes a quarterback and decides who is going to catch it, the third baseman, first baseman, pitcher, or whatever. And then you don't have individuals running into each other. Popped up on the infield by Leyritz. And the Yankees are gone. One, two, three here in the seventh. We go to the eighth. The Yanks have joined a two-run lead. Yankee fans, make plans now to attend a fun-filled softball game on Saturday, July 31st, featuring your favorite sports and entertainment celebrities. The Hollywood All-Stars take on Donald Trump and his Trump All-Stars at 11.30, with the Yankees-Brewers game to follow at 1.30. This exciting softball-baseball doubleheader is brought to you by American Airlines, the Plaza Hotel, and 95.5 WPLJ. We go to the top of the eighth inning and a beautiful night here in the Bronx. Perfect night for baseball. What a shot. And you shoot that scoreboard, you see the Yanks on top, four to two, as the Angels bat here in the top of the eighth. Gary D. Sarcina leads it off, and Mark Hutton. Quite an impressive debut in the major leagues. And it's always fun when you're in a pennant race and you can watch the scores. Uh, the other clubs in your division, Toronto 2 to nothing over the Rangers down in Texas. Oakland and the Red Sox tied in the seventh. Fastball right down the middle, three balls and a strike. Detroit 6 and Kansas City 2. And Baltimore's on top of the Twins 3 to nothing. Hutton has had a problem with the leadoff hitter in almost every inning. In fact, the two runs have come on walks, leadoff walks, back in the first inning and back in the sixth inning. Both walks came around to score. Three and two to DeSarcina at a right field. Tough play for Leyritz, and he gets there. What a play. Leyritz is not known to be a great outfielder, but he makes a great play on this one. He comes all the way in a shoestring catch. And if he doesn't catch that, it's going to be extra bases, probably three. So a great play by Jimmy Leyritz in right field. Normally you would see Paul O'Neill out there with Danny Tarble still the designated hitter, but Leyritz uh, doesn't like to play left field, so they move Danny, uh, they move Paul in the left and make uh, Jimmy Leyritz comfortable in right. There's Paul. And Stan Javier is going to pinch hit for Ron Tingley, so Buck Rogers goes to his bench. A switch hitter, Javier. Hitting just 218. And as a pinch hitter for the Angels, he is 0 for 3, excuse me, 3 for 15, with a couple of RBIs. In time with the Oakland Athletics, late on a fastball. And he'll be back in the upper deck. Still action in the Yankee bullpen. Uh, Hutton has stayed strong here. Into the eighth inning. Some of the scores in the National League on our Nobody Beats the Wiz scoreboard. On that outside corner and a beauty. He has given up just two runs on three hits. His earned run average at the AAA level was 3.4. Oh, well, he has been. Excellent here tonight. Good breaking ball. Oh, why? That looked pretty good to me, Bobby. Hutton has shown a good breaking ball all night long. That slider that breaks down and in on the left-handed batter. Look at that ball. Bobby called for low. That's up and away, so a full count to Stan Javier. Well, the one thing that you will look for in a young pitcher, or even any pitcher, whether he's young or old, and I'm sure that's what Showalter is keeping a good eye on, is the fact that most of the time when you get tired, you start missing up high, and your breaking ball begins to flatten out on you. He loses Javier to a walk. 
So the pinch hitter Javier on first with one out. That's fourth walk of the night for Mark Hutt. Well, with the bullpen uh, struggling for the Yankees, it's a pretty tough decision for Buck Showalter to go out there and and uh, make a pitching change with the youngster showing so much poise tonight. He's only allowed three base hits, even though the Angels have scored two runs. They bring up Lewis Polonia, and what a play by Spike Owen. Boy, that had trouble written all over it. And Spike Owen absolutely picked Louis Polonia's pocket. Great play by Spike Owen at shortstop. Polonia, I mean, just nails this one. And Spike with a wonderful play at short. Two good plays have been made in this inning. That one by Owen and the leadoff batter, De Sarcinia, but Jimmy Lairitz make a good uh, good play in the outfield. That'll yeah, bring up Chad Curtis. He's 0 for 2 with a walk, <laughs> and that is a jam job right there. And Hutton has worked his way beautifully through six. But he two through eight, excuse me. We go to the bottom of the eighth. The Yanks on top, four to two. For winning back America with five of the top ten best sellers. See your Ford dealer and see for yourself. Don Mattingly leads it off for the Yanks here in the bottom of the eighth. Mattingly, Tartabull, and Mike Stanley. The Yankees with three big runs in the sixth inning. They lead it four to two. I guess one of the best in the business, Mark Langston. A high changeup, and it's two balls and no strikes. Mattingly a double his last time up. And really a gift from the California Angel defense. Curtis playing extremely deep in center. Mattingly hit it off the end of the bat and then misplayed it on one hop. And Mattingly hustling all the way, made it into second base. Boggs went to third. There's Steve Farr up in the bullpen. Inside, so Mattingly walks on four straight. And it'll bring up Danny Tartable, and whether Langston will face him or not, I don't know. The story of the evening, Mark Hutton making his Major League de de debut, a big six foot six, 240 pound, 23 year old from Australia. Well, he has certainly been impressive. Not only has he been poised down on the mound, but he has shown sharpness and he has gotten some strikeouts on some three and two pitches in some very crucial situations. And a lot of times you don't see young pitchers come up in their major league debut and make those types of pitches. But Mark feels uh, very comfortable. He looks comfortable out on the mound. And you got to give some credit to Mike Stanley, too, because Stanley has settled him down. He's, Stanley's kind of like a jockey on a fiery type of horse. You know, you get on him, and you somehow just have to, you, you, you got to get him in stride, you know, and you got to get him. He is excellent at that, too. And controlling the, uh, the horse, if you will, and he really does control those pitchers. Buck Ward, Rogers on the way to the mound with Charnable coming up. He's not going to let Langston pitch Charnable, so Langston, who has had trouble of late, has lost his last three decisions, and he leaves here on the short end of a 4-2 score, a pitching change here at the stadium, and we'll take time out. Check the leaders for the Roll Age Relief Award. Roll Age spells 100% relief. And in the American League, Montgomery, Aguilera. 80 points for Montgomery, 76. And in the National League, Smith, no uh, surprises there. Danny Tartable, a big RBI in the sixth inning. <laughs> The attendance 25,989 here at the stadium tonight. Talking about Tartable, a big RBI in the sixth inning. We have Mattingly on second and Boggs on third. And with two strikes, he hit the ball up the middle, backhanded by Lavello. 
He got the out at first, but he drove in the tying run, and then a couple of clutch base hits after that. Bernie Williams, an RBI single, and Paul O'Neill, an RBI single. And the Yanks rally for three in the bottom of the sixth. They lead it four to two. Joe Gray in the pitch to Tartable. On that outside corner, uh, two balls and two strikes. A great one of those young pitchers for the California Angels, only 25 years old, from West Palm Beach, Florida. Last year's finished time between Edmonton and the Angels. Buck Rogers says that this ball club is a young ball club right now with a few veterans mixed in, but we're going to get younger. You're going to see another four or five young people on this ball club and very soon. Well, they're pointing for a couple of years down the road, and they've got a couple of young players that could be absolutely superstars. No question about it. Speaking of young, Pat Kelly and Mark Hutton. And that's the Yankees' future you're looking at right now. And there is more on the way, according to the Yankee organization. And that's what they want to see. They want to see if they have exactly what they think they have in the minor leagues up on the major league level before they go out and try to make a big trade. Three and two to Chartable, fouled off again. G. Michael had a little press conference about the fifth inning uh, about Kevin Moss being sent down and about, yes, a player has a career. As we look at Steve Parr, he looks like he's ready in the bullpen, but Michael said he would put the Yankees ahead of the player and a possibility of a trade, yes. Uh, as your point is, Bobby, with 12 pitchers, something probably going to happen. I would say so. Yeah. Of course, you can look at it the other way, too. The Yankees have had all kinds of problems in their bullpen, so it gives them a chance of going right, left, right, left more times. Bob Wickman now has been put in the Yankee bullpen. Did a fine job last night coming in. So will Wickman be able to continue to be in the bullpen and come back? How long will it take you to warm up? Will he be able to come back the next day and pitch an inning or two? Is he sore? So this is an experiment on the major league level for Bob Whitman to be put in the bullpen. Well, they've got to find some answers. Michael saying that he can get a little bit more length out of his starting pitchers. Jimmy Key, Abbott, he feels that they can get him to the seventh and the eighth inning. He doesn't have the kind of staff that a Tony La Russa has to work with. Tony La Russa say, well, I'm going to work 50 pitches for my pitchers, and then they're out of here. Mike Stanley, the hitter, with nobody out and two men on. The Yanks trying to add to their 4-2 lead. Boston and Oakland still tied at two. Detroit 6-3 over Kansas City. Cleveland has beaten Seattle. Toronto 2-1 over Texas now. They're only in the third inning down in Texas. And Baltimore on top of Minnesota 5-0. As yes. you watch a pennant race develop as we head for the last two months of the season, well, the key to this ball club, I'm talking about the Yankee ball club, is whether Perez and Abbott can pitch true to form the second half of the season. Abbott with a good game last night, so he looks like that may, maybe he's back on track. If they don't get the performance from Abbott and Perez, they're going to be in big trouble. You can't replace two men in that staff, but you can add one to really enhance your starting pitching. Kamenecki had an excellent game his last time out. I've never seen Kamenecki have as good a stuff as he had. Well, that's what you do with the ball club. You mend here, you plug a hole there, you develop, hope somebody comes along. You know what you're going to get from Mattingly and Box and Tartable. That should be a double play. 4-6-3, a perfect double play for the California Angel infield. So... There are two gone, and Mattingly moves up to third. One thing I like about the Yankee organization now, they're not going to panic to make a trade, as they may have in the past. The Yankees are playing it true to form. They think they have some good players on the minor league level. And if a trade arises, and it's something that uh, they feel that is 
well within their organization, I think they'll make it, but they're not going to go out and do something just to be doing it. Bernie Williams, and that's going to get by Polonia for extra bases. Another big base hit for Bernie Williams, who is hitting well over 300 in that number six spot, and I think he's found a home. Well, with Bernie with two RBIs tonight, Bernie with 47, 48, 49 RBIs on the year. And since he has been hitting in the sixth slot, he has been to the plate, I think, nine times, or nine games, that is, in the sixth spot. And I think he has 10 RBIs in nine games, batting six. So he has certainly settled in. And while the pitching change is being made, we'll take time out along the Yankee Baseball Network. your bags and get ready to rock and roll in the Budweiser's Rockin' the Yankee Sweepstakes. August 21st, one grand prize winner will fly to Boston to see the legendary Steely Dan in the Budweiser Concert Series. Then fly back to New York on the 22nd to see the Yankees rock Kansas City. Runners-up will win Steely Dan CDs. To enter, send your name, address, and phone number to Budweiser's Rockin' the Yankees. P.O. Box JAF 3210, New York, New York, 10116. Budweiser, proud to be your buzz. When it comes to hitting, pitching, and fielding, no one does it better than the Bronx Bombers. And when it comes to great giveaways, the Yankees are simply the best. On Sunday, August 1st, all fans 14 and under at the stadium will take home a Yankee baseball club, compliments of Citibank. So catch the fever of Yankee Baseball 93. It's where the action's gonna be. Well, here's this month's fan speak out question. Should the Yankees move to a new stadium? You can send your replies to the fan speak out WPIX TV, 220 East 42nd Street, New York, New York 10017. And a good question it is, and that's certainly been on everybody's mind here in the last uh, few months. We have gotten all kinds of letters already on the fan speak out question. And we will be bringing you those uh, responses later on. We've got a new pitcher now for the California Angels, the second one in this inning. Left-hander Steve Fry will come on to face Paul O'Neill. The Yankees now lead at 5-2 here at the bottom of the eighth. So Buck Rogers trying to hold the score where it's at. He will ask Steve Fry to get Paul O'Neill out here in the eighth inning. Fry, a little crafty left-hander. Oh, two outs to run in, and Bernie Williams on second as the Yanks lead at five to two. Williams had a big two-out RBI single back in the sixth when the Yankees scored three runs. The Yanks have seven hits now in the ball game. Fry a record of 2-0 at 1.78 earned run average. This is his 37th appearance for the California Angels. And Paul O'Neill just having a great year. 330, 13 home runs and closing in on 50 RBIs. Should be playable for Polonia, it is. The Yanks pick up an insurance run. They go to the top of the ninth and lead it five to two. This game summary is brought to you by your Tri-State Jeep and Eagle dealers. There's only one Jeep and it's only at your Tri-State Jeep and Eagle dealers. Mark Hutton, the Aussie from down under, an impressive Major League debut. Eight innings pitched. He gave up one run on three hits. One earned run, that is. He walked four. He struck out five. Stanley continues his hot hitting. Bernie Williams with some key RBIs in this game. Paul O'Neill also continues to hit. And the youngster Hutton will give way to Steve Farr here in the top of the ninth inning. Farr will come on to try to close it for the Yankees. And one pitch out to be one out. Easy right back to Farr. 
And one out. Some changes. Hensley Mullins goes into left field. And Paul O'Neill over and right. And Steve Farr on for the New York Yankees. Got one out and two to go. Farr, a record of one and two, a 4.1 under an average, making his 34th appearance for the Yankees. And he faces Tim Salmon here. Salmon one for three. Had a single left in the seventh inning. Struck out on a high fastball. Hutton blew it right by him earlier. Big breaking ball there by Farr and a beauty. And he's way out in front of Sam and no balls and two strikes. Well, Farr went through a stretch where he was just unhittable. He hit the corners. He knows how to mix his pitches. And then he's had some problems late. Last time out, he was knocked around pretty good. Could be the lack of pitching time. Steve Farr hasn't been uh, able to get into these games. And Farr needs that work to stay sharp in the bullpen, especially uh, when you are not the overpowering type of relief pitcher, your closer. Most of the time when you talk about a closer today in Major League Baseball, he's the guy that throws at 95 or 100 miles an hour and just blows it by you for an inning. Farr's best pitch is breaking ball. Yeah, Farr has to use uh, some common sense. There it is there and a beauty. And a beauty on the outside corner. The breaking ball that Bobby was talking about, Salmon caught looking, and there are two gone. That'll bring up Chili Davis. Davis 0 for 3, a strikeout victim in the second inning. And Steve Farr trying to close it for Mark Hutton, who will win his Major League debut here at the stadium. A youngster called up from AAA Columbus, and you couldn't ask for anything more. He gave up just a couple of hits, a couple of runs on three hits. He struck out five and walked four, and very impressive. Down low, a ball and a strike. The Angels with only three base hits. Polonia had a single. Tim Salmon had a single. And Ron Tingley had a single. Fastball and a beauty. No argument there, Chili Davis. That was a beauty. You're looking for the fast breaking ball. And he got the fastball. And now far one pitch away. And the 29,000 plus here at the stadium on their feet. Field. That ought to do it. Hensley Mullins puts it away, and Steve Farr comes on to close it out for the man of the hour, Mark Hutton. A bit six foot four, 240 pound Australian, and his major league debut here at the stadium. And the Yankees stay right in the thick of things in the American League East. Well, a feather of the Yankees. Half tonight because they've been talking and they've been talking big about this uh, six foot six right hander, Mark Hutton. They wanted to see what he had, if he could handle it here in the big leagues, and certainly tonight was uh, a very impressive performance. He made some big pitches in some crucial situations in this ball game. He only allowed two runs. One of those runs was unearned. So an impressive performance by the 23 year old Australian. Mark Hutton tonight to win his Major League debut as Steve Farr comes on to save it for him. And the Yankees continue to win and they'll hold on depending on what happens tonight in the American League. Toronto was leading at uh, one point, but everybody just bunched up in this Eastern Division. We'll be back with some more Yankee baseball right after this.